please find a comfortable posture. It is very important to keep your back straight, chin up. Gently close your eyes. Take a few deep, long breaths. Let go. Relax your body. Relax your mind. Please do it two more times. experienced relaxation and peace, feel harmony with your body, feel close to yourself, today full Saturday morning. Your day off. You all can be home and sleep a little bit more. But you made this commitment to drive here to the temple. Why is that? Because you all are believing inner peace, inner journey. So in this hour, keep everything behind. Plans, things you had to do today, this coming week. Just be here with yourself, with your own body, with your own mind. Now please create some loving intention in your mind <clears throat> about yourself. May I be well, may I be happy, May I be peaceful. How many times you repeated those three words in your life? Maybe years, people who come to the temple, well, happy and peaceful. When you say it today, right now, this morning, when you repeat those three words, how do you feel? The day you started many years ago or many months ago, many weeks ago, is there any progress in your mind about self-care, self-love? Words have powers.
words can create our intentions. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. Now send your loving thoughts towards your family. First, bring their smiling faces. You are smiling to them, they are smiling to you, they are in front of you. Just your imagination. It doesn't matter. They are good people or they are difficult people. They are part of your family life. Even you have some challenges with them. Is it possible for you to practice loving kindness towards them? Understanding we all are imperfect people. If you want to see their weaknesses all the time, we can see them, not right now. Instead of disappointment or anger, dislike, how about practice loving kindness towards them? Think of them individually, by names. We all are brothers and sisters in one large family. Now send your loving thoughts towards the whole world. May all living beings be well, be happy, be peaceful. Different people, different parts of the world, different countries, different ethnic groups. Look at your life now, right now. You are here Physically, emotionally, right now you are comfortable, even this hour. You have your basic needs, you have a place to live, call home. Are you grateful for that? 
But right now, in this present moment, there are so many people, or oh, animal, in this world. They are in pain, they are dying, without food, without water, without medicine. I have seen them in my own eyes. <coughs> Being grateful to your life, send your loving thoughts to the whole world. May all living beings be well, be happy, be peaceful. Now slowly turn your attention to your breath. Focus on your natural, ordinary breath. Every breath you take in, you take out, is taken mindfully.
if you are distracted by a thought <clears throat> or a feeling or a sensation bring your attention back back to the breath or present moment Now observe your mind, observe your body. <clears throat> your body is relaxed, your mind is calm, tranquil and peaceful. Now bring your palms together close to your heart. Make a wish for yourself. How you want to live, what you want to do. any determination for your own life this is the good place and good time to do this and also if you want to transfer this wholesome thoughts to someone who need blessings 
or even your departed people. May peace be with you, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be peaceful. Thank you very much. Please open your eyes. Okay, we are going to do our chanting. You can have a chanting book. <coughs> okay, let's start. Namo tasa. Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhas Namo Tas Bhagavato Arhato Samma Sambuddhas Namo Tas Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sam Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang Saranang Gachami Sangang Saranang Gachami Duti ampi buddhang saranang gachami. Duti ampi dhammang saranang gachami. Duti ampi sangang saranang gachami. Tati ampi buddhang saranang gachami. Tati ampi dhammang saranang gachami. Tati ampi sangang saranang gachami. Anija vata sankara upad vaya dhammino upajitva nirujjanti te sang upasamu sabbe santa Avera hontu sabbe santa abhyapanya hontu sabbe santa aniga hontu sabbe santa sukiyatanang Pariharantu Mano Pubangama Dhamma Mano Setta Mano Maya Manasache Adutene Bhasativa Karotiva Tato nang dukkha man veti Chakang vahato padang Mano
we believe. My wish Good morning, everybody. Happy to see you all this morning. Thank you so much for coming. So, I want to know how many people driving to the temple today, this morning, like an hour? Okay, okay. A little close, right? 45 minutes, hour, right? So, our driving means long trip. So then you are spending one hour here, then you are going back another hour. Right? That means three hours of your time, you know, so you use. So people who are driving from the distance, when you are driving early morning to be here at uh, 10 o'clock, maybe you are driving maybe 8.30, you know, nine o'clock like that. So why is that? You can go to breakfast with your friend, have some, you know, few cups of coffee and enjoy your morning. Instead of that, you are driving to the temple. Why is that? Important. Yeah, it's very important to you. Why it is important to you? Okay, this is very therapeutic, right? This is very therapeutic. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, you came here for a purpose. So, now I am thinking about myself. Sometimes people are asking me, why did you become a monk as a kid? That time, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> because I like it. Because when I go to the temple, it was fun. Like when you come to the temple, it is so fun, right here? But running this place is not fun. <laughs> for us and for other people, right, Rebecca? Right? It's lots of work. We had to work. So when people come first time, it is so much fun. So when I go to the temple, I felt oh, lots of fun. So my teacher asked, do you want to become a monk? I said, yes. <laughs> right? And so then I didn't have a purpose. But later, being in this journey, many years, then I made the purpose for my life, when I'm getting older. Now always I have a purpose. So maybe first day when you are coming to the temple, you are not sure, curiosity, so curious mind, however you came. You are a little nervous to come inside, you don't know what to do, you don't know who to talk, however you made it. So there is a purpose, you come here, because it is very therapeutic for you. So, now think about, you are coming to learn something for yourself to find some inner peace. Then, what I am doing, after you come here, you are a little awareness about it, you want to learn something about it, you want to eliminate your anxiety, your stress, all those things you want to eliminate when you come here. Then I am doing a big talk or using words Sanskrit 
and you cannot understand what I'm talking about, and lots of things, this sutra and that sutra, Buddha said here, Buddha said this, Buddha said like that, then I'm going long talk, like referring different teachings. Then what will happen? What a heck this monk is doing now. <laughs> I was driving hour to get here, and so, I cannot understand. So do you think that's what you want? If you want that, I can do it perfectly. <laughs> because I have that background too, but I don't do it anymore. Why? It doesn't serve me anymore. It doesn't serve you anymore. So Buddha's teaching is 45 years after his Buddhahood. He was teaching 45 years. All the discourses now collected his teaching 84,000 discourses. Now think about it. 84. So your inner joy, your contentment, do you want to learn all the 40, uh, 44,000 discourses? 84,000 discourses? I don't think so. No need to. No need to. But you want to figure it out, listen to this teaching, Something about yourself. That's what very most important to you, right? So after COVID, I shared this a couple of times. After COVID, I was thinking, I am tired. I am exhausted giving talks. I love my work. But I realized during the COVID, because I had lots of time to go and reflection, Inner reflection I call, I have lots of time to do that during the COVID. Then I realized, I'm tired with this now. So therefore, what I did, I decided myself, I am not going to give Dharma talks. <laughs> then maybe you are thinking, what are you doing now? I'm not doing a Dharma talk. So what I'm doing now, I am putting my heart out. Okay? So, if you see something good in my heart, take it. If you don't like what it is in my heart, maybe everybody, do, you know, everybody doesn't like what, I, what you see in my heart. If you don't like it, nothing to worry. Just go and find some, somebody else's heart. <laughs> right? So, no need to complain about, oh, Bhante didn't do right teaching. So, you can go and find something else. Right? So, what I am doing now, putting my heart out. So that means how I practice, how I figure it out in this inner journey, teaching of the Buddha, understanding, thinking, concentrating, how I figure it out. I think that's what you want to hear. I don't think you want to hear all the list of items. Now always I'm reminding people, no sweat for that. No need to try. Just Google. No need to come to the temple for that. Google it, you can find 84,000 discourses. <laughs> Why you come to the temple? So therefore, you want to learn something practical. Does make sense? Last many years, I tried so hard reaching to people in a very practical level. Even I have very strong academic background as a monk. That's why I said I can do that too, but I don't want to. It's not my interest anymore, because it doesn't serve me, it doesn't serve to the world. So, therefore, I want to share with you how I think, how I practice, how I figure it out. It is beneficial to you. So, now think about Buddha's life. He used to be a prince. Prince living where? palaces and royal life. We know about royal life, right? And we heard about the royal life. So it is fancy. So later, after his Buddhahood, he's explaining to the monks how he used to live his life. He had the three palaces for three seasons. How wonderful. So when you go to India, even now, you can see all the ruins, his three palaces. 
So day and night, he was enjoying his life. That's what, you know, being a royal, they were believing they had to have fun. So his father kept him very safe place, not to experience difficulties and negativities in the society. He was almost hidden in the palace, but inside the palace he had all the luxurious life. He was having fun. The way I can see it now when I'm reading and understand, try to understand it. So, he used, you know, maybe Buddhist people doesn't like to hear this, but this is the reality. He used to live like a playboy type person <laughs> in the palace. After I say the, that word, you everybody no need to explain. <laughs> you understand, right? So, he had that kind of lifestyle According to his own words, I can see he was really having fun, whatever people call fun. So, what happened after having fun? Hmm? He was bored. Then, what is going on when you feel bored? Hmm? Then you are looking for something else. Why? There is no inner contentment. So, sometimes he is explaining, sometimes he was having all-night parties, sometimes he was bored. He is not paying attention to all those dancing, he was, you know, pushing her chair back, he is kind of having a nap. So, you know, you can see in the sutras. So, middle of the night, he's kind of wake up, all the dancers, all, you know, all the beautiful women and beautiful people and dancing to enter him. So, then they can see he's not really enjoying, he's sleeping. But he's the king. They cannot leave. So what they do? They just put everything everywhere and they also having a nap. Then middle of the night, Prince Siddhartha woke up. Then when the dance floor started, everything is fancy, beautiful and elegant. Now he woke up middle of nowhere. He's so looking at everybody. Oh my God. It's all like a dead bodies. Everybody is everywhere, sleeping, snoring. Then he was thinking, what's going on here? Now that fun part is over. <laughs> now he doesn't see that fun anymore in that scene. So he was concerned, he was worrying. So that's how people start to think. So, today I want to talk about the three things. So, other day I was thinking about it. Now think about like this. You see something. You know, you know, we have senses. I was thinking myself, we have senses. When we have senses, what we do? We use our senses to communicate. You know, we see outside things, bring in, so then we are making judgment. How we are making the judgment? Now think about you see somebody. What do you see? How you see? Your okay, your perception. How, how? What is your perce perception? How your experiences. Yeah, experiences. So you label. Then you label it. Now think about you see a person. Oh, he's good looking. Okay. So sometimes we, we see that, right? So that your perception. So whatever I say it is beautiful, it is not beautiful to you. It is totally my perception. That's what we call mind-made realities. Does it make sense? So those mind-made realities we are believing. So those mind-made realities we have, what we have? Fun. First experience is fun, enjoyable. So, now think about those mind-made realities, you know, pleasurable. What is the result? That's the first one. Everything, whatever you see through your senses, whatever you experience, always there is a fun because of your perception. So, whatever you call fun, enjoyable, <laughs> entertaining, what is the next thing? Uh, the expectation. When your expectation never meet, disappointment. Every fun thing end up with the disliking or disappointment. That's the second one. So when you have disappointed, 
How do you feel? No need to explain. Right? So, when you are disappointed, then what you are thinking? Hmm? Something new. Okay, a little bit more. Hmm? Get irritated. Then, you want to be there every day? Irritated? Then, what you are thinking? That's why I'm, I can say it right away, but I want to get it from you. It is irritated, it's difficult, it's disappointing, it's painful. Get angry, then keep going. Now you are going the, towards negativities. Then what will happen? You get exhausted, really exhausted. Then you are thinking, oh my God. Then you depress, anxiety. Then you go to the therapist. Right? Then therapy will tell you, <laughs> this is what going, hey, how many times, you know, you know, the people came from the hospital, from the doctor's office to the temple. Hey, there is a temple. Some people already know me. Go and talk to Bhante. So sometimes they come to me and say, my doctor said, go and talk to you. <laughs> so many people last many years came to this building because of the therapists, doctors and counselors. That means you are looking for something to solve the problem. Solve the problem. So that means something man-made realities, something pleasurable. Then there is a danger, it is an outcome, the second one. What is the third one then? No, third one is something good. You are looking for the answers. Distraction. Huh? Distraction. Okay, distraction. Okay. Anything? Contentment, looking for more contentment. So that's what, that is the purpose you are here. If you can understand, other day I was sitting in the monk's house, other side. I was thinking, if I can understand these three things happening in my mind, with my uh, senses, that is my inner journey. Very simple. Therefore, then I was thinking, no need to understand 84,000 discourses <laughs> to get this. No need to understand 84,000 discourses to understand this. So now, why you are here? To get that part. Why? Other two already you had in life. Does it make sense? So why it is came to my mind other day when I'm driving to meditation with Tad? Because I always put funny title for the Dharma talks. Right? So I put the Dharma talk title for today, Dharma Frog. <laughs> Anybody see that? You know, Dharma Frog. Are you curious about it? Yes. yes. Why? I want to bring the curiosity to the people, then people come to the temple to listen. <laughs> That's my goal. So, so I put the word Dharma Frog. Why? When I read that, I realize about myself. That's why I was thinking, the frog is my Buddha. That frog gave, gave me some teaching. So this is the reading I did, right? It's beautiful. So now think about, we put the live frog to a pot, like this kind of pot. Then we put in the stove and put the fire. So now water is boiling. Then frog is there. So now water is getting warm, then getting hot. Now frog is there. What is happening? Do you know what is happening? Frog is adjusting his body to the temperature. Just read it. It is a, scientifically they proved that. So what frog does? Adjusting his body to the water. It's, you know, he doesn't know he's getting hot and hot and hotter and hotter and hotter, but he keep getting, adjusting to that hot water. Why is that? There is a little pleasure. I love hot water. You know, that's my weakness too. I love it because I think, you know, because this cold weather, I like to be with the hot water. So now finally I realize I had to put the gloves and when I wash my thing, otherwise I'm too hot. Why? There's a little pleasure being hot in the cold weather. So then this frog 
gave me great wisdom. So when I keep reading and understanding this story, this frog getting used to this worm, keep adjusting his body to the temperature. But he doesn't know it's getting hotter and hotter. If you feel too hot, what do you have to do? You know, get out. But he doesn't know what to do. Why he is that? That is pleasurable for him. Then what will happen? He keep adjusting his body. Then he lose his strength and energy. Then what will happen to the frog? He dies. Frog dies. Then after I read that story, I was thinking, this is me. This is all of us. When you see little fun and entertainment in life, you think, I think, we think, this is everything. But we don't know this is a trap. This is a trap. But, you know, when we say the hot water, what is boiling, don't misunderstand. It doesn't mean you cannot enjoy hot water. Does make sense? It doesn't mean you cannot enjoy hot water. You can enjoy hot water. There is some pleasure. Buddha never said there is no pleasure having these senses. There is some pleasurable feeling in that. But if you think that is the end, that's the last thing in your life, this is it, this is my whole life, then what will happen? Then you will die there. Does it make sense? You will die there. So, therefore, if you see a little entertainment just Please have it, enjoy it, but don't think this is my whole life. Otherwise, you will stuck in there. So, you, me, we all have to get out from that trap. But why we are in trouble in life always? Because our senses, we always believing everything is perfect. It is not. Now think about People love ice cream. Ice cream, you know, summer is coming, you know, ice cream, sometimes uh, Temple Kitchen making coconut ice cream, mango ice cream, all so good, it was delicious, please purchase it, you know, that's okay. <laughs> so it is so fun, you know, so, but eating ice cream is a good thing, it's okay. But if you are eating whole container of ice cream, that's not good. Right? It doesn't serve you. It doesn't help you. So now you don't know about... Uh, eating ice cream is a good thing, but you don't know about your limits. I think this is a very simple concept. To understand this, no need to meditate 24 hours. Now I put some seed into your head. Now, while you are driving back another hour to go home, keep think, keep thinking what I said. Then you can understand how you are creating troubles, problems in your life. So, I want to make sure again and again and again, it doesn't mean you cannot have pleasurable things. So, sometimes when I say, oh, this is suffering, this is pain, then people say, oh, then I had to be a monk, I had to be an ascetic, I had to be in the forest, you know, I had to live under a bridge, under the tree, I don't want to have a house. That is craziness. <laughs> that is craziness. So, then people are thinking, I'm a monk. So, people think, oh, I'm a, he's a monk. He cannot have anything fancy. That is wrong. If somebody give me a expensive shoes, I'm going to wear it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to have fun with that. But I know that's not my com complete inner contentment. Does it make sense? Sometimes people go into this extreme or that extreme. That is the difficulty. So if you have things, enjoy it. But Understand yourself, this is not everything in my life. Why is that? Everything is subject to change. Whatever we call fun, entertaining, joyful, what is the end result? We lose. If we are losing it, then hurry up. <laughs> Enjoy it in the right way. So when we say that, most of people think, oh, according to the Buddhist teaching, we cannot enjoy it. 
that is wrong. No, you can enjoy everything and everybody, no problem. But make sure what direction you are going. Okay? So, <clears throat> I was in Phoenix one time. My host family, um, they always, when I go there, they give me a car to drive for my classes. So, only car they have, Jag. Jaguar. Right? Jaguar convertible. So she's very excited about it. Bante, put the roof down and dry. I said, then your hair's going like that. I said, good luck, I don't have hair. So they are joking. So I don't know. The only thing I need, a car. So then I'm driving that car. Can you, you know, see the monk driving a jab? <laughs> It's just a car, but I'm driving, I'm enjoying it. I can, I am a little, you know, drive fast a little bit, I think. And so, so anyway, one day somebody was so upset. Why? I was driving a Jaguar. Why is that? If, if I live here, maybe I have a car. So he didn't even come to my meditation. Almost he came to the meditation class. He saw I'm coming out from the jag. He was thinking, oh, another kind. So then, however, now think about the universe address the issue. Then right away, universe realized this is something going crazy. Now universe put everything into the perspective. So I was totally fine. I, I don't know what it is. So one of my friends came and said, Bante, I want to take you to dinner. There is one of my best friends also there, that person. Now we went to the dinner, he is not really paying attention to me. Usually people are very friendly with me, but I am smiling and happy, but he is not talking to me. He is talking to my friend. That's, they are talking, I am just sitting like a stranger. You know, I can handle it, because he was upset. Then we came out after, the, uh, after dinner, then I was trying to get into the car. I said to my friend Anna, you know, Anna, Look at my car, you know, she knows me so long. Then he, she said, Bhante, this is not yours, you are not live here, I know that. So who's this car? I said, my host family always giving me this car to drive to my classes. Then that person, really? That's not your car? I said, no, how come I have a Jag? <laughs> right? right? He didn't, he made that assumption. So now you can see whatever you see, you are creating a shoe. So, so therefore I'm asking, if somebody give me a jack to drive, I will drive. Nothing wrong with that. But I know it is not my whole life. I know it is not my whole uh, happiness. I am so grateful to have a car. I was driving to help people and then done. So what people are doing, I finished that job and did it there, leave the car there, but people who see it, still they are carrying it. They, they are creating more problems. So what I really want to ask you today, be aware about your senses. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, otherwise, what will happen, whatever happened to the frog, same thing happened to you and myself. So that's why I call that frog teaching me a lesson. Therefore, I call him Dharma frog. <laughs> How wonderful, right? Dharma frog. Any thoughts? Any questions? Anything? Any comments? Yes? How does the jaguar drive? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. <laughs> it is good. Huh? I have a <laughs> Mini Cooper. <laughs> So I think it's a perfect size for me, yeah. You know, big cars, yeah, middle path, because I can handle it easily, yeah. But it's not big enough, sometimes I have so many stuff. And so, any other thoughts? Okay, yeah. You need to go to Madaras, they just have a little statue of a frog. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful. I have seen that. Yeah, I have seen that. Okay, anybody new today? New people? Okay, please introduce yourself. Your name? Uh, my name is Hi. Hi, Hi Regan. Welcome to Blue. Anybody else? I'm Laura. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Anybody else? Jason. Hi, Jason. 
Yeah. After uh, we are over, please come forward. I have something for you. And one more thing. So people um, who didn't take the precepts, uh, anybody planning to take the precepts uh, this year? I'm suggesting this book, Mind, uh, The Mindfulness Survival Kit, Five Essential Practices. So this is Thich Nhat Hanh's book, a really good book, very simple. He explained really well what is the five precepts. They are uh, mindful, you know, helping for your mindfulness practice. So if you are planning to take the precepts this year, this is the book I am recommending. Please read this book, okay? Thank you. Okay, Rebecca. So yeah, when uh, after we put the date, you know, then we are doing the classes too, couple of classes. Yeah, and also when we are talking about the taste of Sri Lanka, I think this is the 18th year, right, Rebecca? 18th year. Yes, yeah, so 18th year. Um, I know this is our biggest fundraiser for the temple because, you know, I'm always telling people maintaining, running this building is lots of expenses. It's an old building, always things breaking down, and always I'm calling her and we had to fix this and fix that. So therefore keep this place for you and so we had to work so hard. Therefore your generous heart, your kindness, your compassion so you can bring your family members and you can invite your friends to Taste of Sri Lanka. This year a little bit slow uh, selling. I know people in the last minute they are buying the tickets but we really want to focus uh, the preparation of the food. We are working on it right now. For, therefore, please consider to support the temple. If you cannot come to the Taste of Sri Lanka, but still they can buy. You can, you can participate by buying the 50-50 online virtual raffle tickets. So for the first time this year, the 50-50 cash raffle is virtual, so you don't have to be present. Mm -hmm. And other things, some, you know, a couple of people asked me recently, um, this place has a like a central funding from another big uh, Buddhist community. I said, no way. We are very uh, individual organizations, yeah, self-sustaining, you know, place. And so, therefore, we don't have this big support because I'm not bringing money from somewhere else. And our community, actually, because of my traveling, people connecting to this place and supporting too. That's a good thing. And but we all have to work hard. So maybe you only thing you see sitting on the meditation cushion and meditating, that's wonderful. But to keep this one meditation cushion in this room, so many hundreds of thousands of people to work hard. So that is the reality. So I'm not asking, you know, oh, we have to give money, money, money. No. So if you cannot give money, still you can do voluntary service. So I know some people come and clean the bathrooms, otherwise we have to pay for that. So lots of volunteers supporting that way too. I'm so grateful to all the uh, volunteers team. Yeah, can I add one more thing? Yeah. So we actually this week were just approved to have a booth at the farmer's market again this year. Which is so exciting. 
<laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Right. And then today, because we're kind of kicking off, we have two months before the farmer's market starts, we're selling coconut pancakes. We have regular hand and gluten-free. We don't normally have gluten-free sherry, sheer lousy. We don't have gluten-free. <laughs> 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 yeah, coconut pancake is so awesome. <laughs> but don't become a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Eat mindfully, okay? Yeah. Judy? <laughs> yeah. So anyone wants to purchase the ticket, you can get from the uh, bookstore. And also this book also you can purchase from here. I forget to tell you that. So thank you so much. That's it, right? Thank you. Please stand up.